Oh, happy birthday. Yes, thank yeah. you. Yeah, happy birthday yeah. both of Happy birthday. Uh, sorry, happy only birthday. one. Yeah, you can only one. wish one birthday. Oh, no. I call Choose Dan. wisely. <laughs> the guest or somebody you'll see tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to go with the guest. <laughs> Everybody, come on, it's time to listen. Get together, the show is about to begin. Bring your friends and your cows and all your chickens. Here we go. Time to laugh and maybe even learn something Oh, who am I kidding? You're not gonna laugh Either way, it's time to get started with The Sundial Podcast Hello, everybody. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. To... 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 The... Sundial... Podcast... Improv... What? Sentence. Oh, I thought you were doing. <laughs> Poop. Nice. A callback. Call callback. <laughs> that is a callback. It to, is a callback. Uh, uh, so, listen, all those binging... Listeners, get rewarded. The, the, We're interweaving a narrative throughout this podcast. Yeah. So listen for it. The narrative. The narrative. Discourse. You it's, know what? You just want to start this one over again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, I was kidding. We do that thing where people say they start it over again and then they really don't because it makes it sound like they're real relaxed and don't care about their podcast. Well, we don't. Anyway, so welcome to this episode of the podcast. I'm James Wagner, webmaster, second most important in the sundial. Um, once again, I am Lauren Malacherno, uh, editor-in-chief for only a couple more weeks. Oh, dating the podcast. Dating the po- well, <laughs> whatever. It's April 2nd. It's April 2nd. <laughs> um, should we just get... Let's just go to it. Nobody just, wants to hear our this stuff. This is wor- the worst content we've ever created. <laughs> Yeah, is we made some pretty opening? bad content. I made a list piece once about musicals, and this is worse this than is that. This is worse than that. Um, I wrote a piece about peppermint-scented underwear, and this is worse than that. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, all right, so let's just get right into it. Yeah. This episode is the Whiskey Bear edition, mm-hmm. kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it yes, is. It Definitively, is. Definitively, capital Definitively. Whiskey Bear, capital E edition. Um, so today we have three guests, which is more than normal, um, so we're just... Our first guest is uh, Jackie Shreves. Hey. Uh, I'm also, I would like to say, I'm probably the third most important member of the Sundial. I was the former vice president, currently dating the webmaster, so I think that still bumps me up Mm -hmm. in your list. Yeah, see, vice president, as we established, is the least important member of the Sundial. (laughs) However. However, dating the webmaster boosts her right back up. Boosts her right back up. We all know this is an oligarchy, so being related slash... With another member gives you power. I don't like that you combine being related to and dating. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Let's just move on. Let's just move on. Let's um, just keep going. Our next guest is the Whiskey Bear himself, Dustin Meadows. Hey, it's uh, me, the Whiskey Bear. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> um, and our, our uh, third and final guest is uh, Peter Brick. Hey, I do Whiskey Bear shows. A lot of them. All the time. It's great. Um, <laughs> eloquence and its brevity. It's also double birthday. It's both Peter double and birthdays. James's birthday. Yay! 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 Isn't, that a, isn't that a sound effects board? No. We could. We could. I'm leaving. More yeah. than <laughs> we don't need me singing on the podcast. I think we do. I think that's what... we. I got our ratings back last week. And, and they were like, we, we need more Lauren singing. We need more Lauren and we need less awkward banter. Which, uh, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> we have doubled down for yeah, this we have episode. really gone for that. You guys could just have a group of backup singers screaming, not the bees. Oh. <laughs> if we had a budget. Four-part harmonies. Yeah. Four-part harmonies. Yeah. Yeah. Four part just harmony. find some choir kids. Not the or some bees. Kids. They love attention. Yeah, they like, yeah. those nerds love attention. Just lie and tell them it'll be on WOSU. Those stupid nerds. Yeah, those dumb Stupid, dirty, dirty nerds, dumb college and their degrees. Yeah, being stupid nerds. Nerds. You guys really need to get a thesaurus and look at nerds. <laughs> <laughs> no, we only have nerds. Jackie, thesauruses are extinct. So but we can't. Why would we get a thesaurus <laughs> if we're talking about a candy? Classic. <laughs> Classic <laughs> silence. All right. So um, something that all of our guests have in common is stand up. So, yeah, like, stand-up is not something that the Sundial focuses on. Um, we do a lot of other stuff, so I think it would be interesting to talk about stand-up and performing it and writing it. Um, if anyone has any thoughts, I could just keep 
<laughs> talking. I mean, we we got plenty of opinions. Yeah, we got, we got all manner of opinions. Which oh, ones yeah. do you want? There's a smorgasbord. Let's Just, go. Let's go with the classic one, the one that you get in any talk show. What is your worst stand-up experience? Oh God, Ooh. All of them. Yeah. <laughs> I even have one. Traveling with Peter Brick for the last month. <laughs> hey, you got to travel. No, I'm right. kidding. It was a blast. It was a blast. Um, it was great. Yeah, we blasted music and talked and yeah, got uh, slim gems. Listen to a lot of Jay Z and Lincoln Park. Oh, yeah. This sounds like a like a late thousands inline skating movie. Oh, I mean, pretty much. That's how we live our life, you know. Oh, yeah. Sweet, rolling around. You know, one uh-huh. one sick shredding our trick at a time. Oh, yeah. That's what they're called. It's kind yeah. of a driving Miss Davies scenario, except it's just two. Yeah. Two <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's apologizing for slavery. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Uh, worst stand-up Yeah, we're, we'll go worst stand-up There's so many uh, of yeah. them. Um, <laughs> one, one that jumps to mind uh, was I was maybe two years into doing stand-up, if that, um, and I, I started doing stand-up at Bowling Green where I went to school, and uh, every year they did a, um, they did like a last comic standing contest uh, and I did it four semesters the last two years I was there. I made it to the final rounds every time, which after I graduated, I was like, hey, maybe I can keep doing this. And about a year after I graduated, they were bringing a uh, touring comedian at like one of our events for the, the campus, for the students there. And basically, the last comic standing contest, then they turned it into a chance to open for whoever was there. Bring, I don't even remember who it was. It was not anybody I gave a flying mm-hmm. shit about at all. But uh, I, I went up there for this round. It was at 6 p.m. Uh, in the Black Swamp Pub in our student union while the sun was still out during, like, happy hour when no students were on campus. Uh. And uh, they, like, there were six people supposed to compete for uh, over two Fridays, and then, like, the top three would advance, and then from the second round, they'd select one person to open or whatever and me and one other dude were the only people that showed up oh my God. and the guy there is like oh we're still gonna do the show i was like nobody wants this man <laughs> there's like not even enough comedians were hungry for this <laughs> like also there three of us automatically move on like we like de facto we get to advance so let's just fucking like just not bother with this, and then next Friday maybe people will show up and we can do it then. Guy was not having it, uh, and I, at that point, had was so fresh doing it that I hadn't really established my uh, my policy of saying no to bullshit gigs yet. Mm-hmm. So I, if somebody said I was like, oh, on stage, I was like, oh, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> we'll get up on that stage. Uh, and it, it was awful, and the, uh, the first joke, it was a joke that I don't do anymore because it's not very clever, uh, it was just about a gal I dated who gave bad hand jobs, and, like, literally as soon as I said the word bad hand job, just a table full of teachers, one who was my poli-sci instructor for three different classes <laughs> in my college <laughs> career, one just looked up and they're just like, Jesus, was like, look, and, and I just broke the middle of I was like, I don't want to be doing this either, they told me I had to, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm not having any fun doing this, I promise. Um, that that was one of the the rougher ones, just in terms of the setting of the show, the conditions of the show, because the person running it had no fucking clue what they were doing, uh, and, and I feel like a lot of people want to, it's called ambush comedy. Uh, mm-hmm. It's basically any time you set comedy up in a space where no one's expecting it, where there's regular <laughs> stuff going on, and a lot of open mics are that way too, where like they're set up in the main space of a bar, mm-hmm. and like the venue doesn't promote the comedy is happening, so people come in, or like you know maybe it's at a restaurant and somebody comes in with a family of kids, and you're like, all right, we gotta wait 40 minutes to start the fucking show now because kids. I'm not gonna clean my setup for children. <laughs> yeah. Also, like I, I can't. And it's knowing when comedy is welcome and when it's wanted is a is a very good skill to pick up, (laughs) Uh, both as a performer and as a showrunner. There's even recently, like there's been shows where I've showed up and maybe the group that we were supposed to be doing for the show just straight up no showed. And it's like, oh, we can still salvage this. Let's, you know, do you want to work on anything? It's like, no. 
I would rather have gone home and like fucking had a night in, but instead I came out here to do a show that we're not doing, which isn't on you guys, but yeah. no, I don't want to fucking turn this into an open mic. I'd rather just walk away with some dignity. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you have to strike the balance between being hungry to perform and actually what you're going to eat when you perform. Precisely. And that's the thing. I'm like, when you start out, I get it. Like, everyone is eager to perform. They're fucking hungry for stage time. And when you start, you should absolutely get on stage as much as possible. But you also need to understand that not all stage time is created equal. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you might do five uh, in one room, and, like, that's the only room you need to do that night. You got in front of a hot crowd, you got to run your set, but then you're just like, oh, there's two other mics, I'll go to theirs, and I'll run my set there. And then it's no one there but the comics, and it's just a hassle, or there's hecklers, there's people being shitty in the crowd, a bunch of drunks that wander down. So it's, it's important to kind of figure that out early on. Um, the, the biggest piece of advice I always give everyone starting out when they ask me is that you need to be ready to fail um, because you're going to bomb. Even after, like, you get good at it. Like, at case in point, we were, Peter and I were just in Cincy last week. And it wasn't a bad crowd, but it was a crowd that that didn't really like to laugh. Like, they were having a good time, they were nodding their heads. They weren't vocal. Exactly. So, like, a crowd that's not laughing, even if they're enjoying it, feels just as bad as a crowd that does not like what's going on. And uh, I had to power through 45 fucking minutes (laughs) of just spattered laughter throughout the whole thing, so. My set was pretty fun. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's because you only had to do 15. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the issue. <laughs> um, sweet 15. Does anyone else have any bad stories? Uh, I have similar oh, ambush oh, comedy you. stories. Um, went to Cincinnati. It was a restaurant oh. and dinner. Oh. Um, there were people there for the show who were interested in it, but then there was a regular crowd that was apparently they didn't angry. know. So it was kind of... it would. The only equivalent I could think of if you went would be if you went to Bob Evans on a Sunday <laughs> at noon, and then you stood up on a table. <laughs> you started yelling jokes at started people. Started yelling jokes at people, and oh that's exactly what that felt like. And some people were amused, and then other people were understandably just there for dinner. <laughs> kind of want that to be the next Sundown Supper is we go to we go to Bob Evans. <laughs> we just start yelling jokes. Dinner. We just start reading. Oh, we do that anyway. We're just really loud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, yeah, we're a show no matter where we are. And then besides that, I'd just say my first open mic. Really? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, because I was the... How long, like, when was that? I'm um, just curious. I'm going... I think I've been doing it for like five years now. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, so it was like about when I was 22... I was the funny kid growing up, and I was funny socially around everybody, so I was, I was like, the funny guy. <laughs> and then I decided to, like, try stand-up, and I go to this open mic, and everybody's super excited. Oh. They're coming out. I'm like, all right, yeah! I'm like, I'm tearing up on here. Like, nope. <laughs> no, I, uh, I get up on there, and I, I eat shit for five minutes. In front of my friends that bothered to come out and uh, uh. support me. So, it wasn't terrible in the big picture, but yeah. in the moment, <laughs> it, it was a low point. But, yeah, like Dustin said, you got to be ready to fail, and you got to lean into it. Because <laughs> you're not going to get better until you just keep, keep on failing. <laughs> Does anyone remember a joke that they told that just bombed hard? That you thought maybe that you thought we were just going to go so much we'll better. We'll, get, we'll ask Jackie uh, her worst stand up in a second. Yeah. No, no, I have money. Oh, um, I, I've got one that's still. Uh, I have I have a joke that I've been working on for at least three years now about my dad passing away. That, uh, man, it's fucking hard. Like uh, every like once in a while, it'll hit really well with the crowd. But uh, it's actually it's not going to make this album I'm recording because I've been running it in my set for almost a month now, and it's still not really. It's just like people just being like, oh, yeah. Death is, death is hard to bring up. <laughs> it's, I, I, I think, I think it's hard to bring up as flippantly as I do, yeah. uh, because I hated my dad. <laughs> no, it's, it's just, a, it's just about the experience, like my dad passing away and like my college roommate, who was a real <laughs> piece of shit, uh, about it when it happened. 
but like that's a joke that I've been working on for years and uh, like for a year I just stopped telling it mm -hmm. and then I kind of brought it back out I was like oh maybe I'll try and punch it up you know maybe now it'll be ready like to go on this album or whatever and I've been running it almost every set uh, for like the last month me and Peter have been doing shows and it's still I just did it last night and I finally was like nope nope I'm just gonna put this one back I'll come to it in a couple years when I'm better mm -hmm. yeah. so that that's probably been one of the bigger ones uh, that that I've had the hardest time with. Yeah, I've had a ton. I just don't remember them. Because <laughs> when they flop, I just like I throw them out the back window. Yeah. <laughs> throw them out the back it's window. It's like a trauma. You just it just like erases yeah. from your mind. Yeah, we're, we're just gonna purge that. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, you um, and the audience forgot it because you also forgot it. Yeah, yeah. I was like, "Your this joke is dead to me." <laughs> <laughs> Who said that joke? I didn't like. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Know. Oh, yeah. it was horrible. And then um, either that or it's just I came to the stage and it wasn't like as coherent as idea as it was in my head. Mm -hmm. It wasn't so all the way there. Like, yeah, it's <laughs> like it makes sense in my brain, but then when you actually verbalize it, it's not really a joke. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Jackie? Jack. Worst uh, stand up experience slash. Horrible joke. Horrible joke. Um, slash stand up experience. Well, I have the fun feature of having done, I'm pretty sure I can literally count on my hands the number of times I've done stand-up. I could And that's I on one well. hand. Uh, it's five, if you forgot how many fingers the average person has. Uh, my first three times I did stand-up, I really enjoyed it. The first time, Lauren, you saw it, because we were in class together. Yeah! That was the first time we were taking I was going to say, I've done stand-up three times, and you were present at all three. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, but that went really well. Then the first time I did it for Whiskey Bear at Broken Records and Beehives, I really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. Then I did a charity show that I really enjoyed, and then the other two times I just couldn't get into it, which is really hard to do when, like, sometimes I'll go up on stage and, like, as I'm going on stage, I'm like, oh, this is not going to go well because I'm just not in the right mindset to do it. Yeah. Um, so the past two times have not been what I wanted them to be, but it is kind of the same thing where you need to just keep doing it to be able to get better at it. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I know James and I want to go to more open mics, and now I'm terrified from what you guys have said that we're <laughs> going to have a nice experience like that going to open mics. I mean, and that's, I mean, there are exceptions. Like, that's yeah. not every open mic. It, they, they change, like, the tides. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. some weeks will be great, other weeks will be not great, but it, it, the trick is to kind of take something away from each one, regardless yeah. of whether it's a positive or a negative experience. If it's not a great experience... Uh, maybe you came out learning how to handle a room a little bit better. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's a positive experience, obviously your material fucking worked. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the I think the trick is I I don't I I honestly in the time I've been doing stand up, I only feel like there's been one set that was a complete fucking waste of my time, and that was the show that I told you guys about where yeah. we did stand up in broad daylight <laughs> for just no reason. But every other show, like even the bad ones, especially the bad ones, like yeah. I try and take something away from that. You know, like what could I have done? What did I do that worked? You know, like and just to apply that moving forward. Yeah, failures are really hard in comedy, and especially performing comedy because they're very singular. Oh yeah. You very there's a lot of pressure on you yourself, especially in stand up when it's just you on mm -hmm. stage. I know for stuff like sketch where you do still have kind of people that are out there with you. Yeah, I'd much rather have a sketch bomb. Well. I've been a part of sketches that bombed. I've been a part of a stand-up set yeah. that bombed. But I, it's easier when when there's someone on stage with you. Yeah, I'm be like, this sure. is. We both were horrible. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's and that's the thing with sketch. It's it's so <laughs> much harder that. because sketch you don't get to refine at open mics. Like you can sit there and you can rehearse it with your your group mm -hmm. as much as you want. But like, cause I, I used to do Monday Night Live, so I did sketch shows every month. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know, sometimes like something great that you thought was amazing in rehearsal during mm -hmm. read-throughs like it just doesn't hit and there's there's no way to know what's gonna hit and what's not until you do it in front of an audience mm -hmm. I, and I think that's kind of the benefit of stand-up is you get to polish you get to refine that material just because it didn't hit at an open mic mm -hmm. doesn't mean that two months from now you're not gonna punch it up and it's gonna kill the fucking show you're yeah on. that's why I, I also like I wrote down like testing different jokes because I think it's like really interesting how stand-ups like you've been touring so that mm -hmm. you can record uh, your special that's is that the word? It's just an album. I mean, an album. It, it would be if anyone was interested in it. Yeah. Well, I think I, I think <laughs> it's special. <laughs> but like, um, like something like I feel like people who aren't actively studying slash just like really involved in comedy don't really realize is that like 
the joke that you hear, like, if you're watching a Netflix special, is, like, that has been told a million different ways. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know, if anyone has, like, an experience about, an interesting experience about, like, just testing and changing different jokes. I mean, the... I know that's, like, a broad... No, that's... Oh, I mean, in case... My, I just think it's... I personally just uh, think it's really interesting. My, my closing joke is that it's the first joke I ever wrote as a stand-up. Yeah. Um, and it's... I, I wrote it back in 2008, the first time I did Last Comic Standing. It was, like, 30 seconds long. And it's been my closer now for, like, the last year or so. And it's kind of grown a little bit more. It's, and it's got more to it. Like, I've tied it to another joke that I've started doing the last couple of years. So... Mm -hmm. That, and that's kind of how I've gauged what is going on this album. Because, like, case in point, like, the joke about my dad, like, that's not where it needs to be. So that doesn't make the cut. But everything else on this album, it, it's stuff that I've been doing for at least a few years. And at least in the case of this one joke that I've been doing literally since I started stand-up. And I finally feel like it's to the point where there's nowhere else I can go with that material. So I, I think, honestly, I, I think material can always evolve... And, you know, if you spend five years working on a joke to get it where it needs to be, that's fine. Some jokes, some material, it's, it's harder to tackle. Or maybe when you conceive it, it's you're not at the level you need to be to make that work yet. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's, it's entirely up to, obviously, whoever wrote it. But I, I think it's cool that there's kind of that, that fluidity with it. That you can always change things. You can always punch things up. You can always grow and evolve your material. And then one day you just say, all right, this joke is where it is. It's done. So is there, like, a level of catharsis in being able to do this album of, like, some jo some of these jokes you can just finally release and not... Very much so. The, this album, uh, it's, its purpose is twofold. Um, one is so that I can get a tape of a, a longer set so I can start kind of being more proactive and submitting to clubs for work, things like that, because I kind of stalled out the last year or two because I've been so busy fucking producing stuff that I've kind of neglected like my individual mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, efforts as a stand-up. So that's part of it. And then the second part is to be done with this fucking material. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Because I, like in the last year, I've written maybe five new minutes worth of material and that's that's not a lot. Um, and, and I know, like, I haven't gone to, I haven't been going to open mics with any regularity in at least a year and a half. And granted, it's because I've been doing shows and stuff, which is a good problem to have, but at the same time, like, if, if I'm sick of doing this material, like, how is, how are other people that are seeing me doing this material, because that I do it so often in town going to feel about it? I just say, I, I, these jokes all started somewhere, and I feel like I've written them, I've punched them up. I've, I've pushed them as far as they can go, and I, I think they're where they need to be, and it's time to get them out into the world and mm -hmm. move on to the next stage. Tuck them in at night and just let them sleep. Exactly. Just give them a kiss. Just put a pillow over them, just one pillow in the cuckoo's <laughs> nest. Oh. Tell them about the bunnies. I was going to oh. give them more oh, milk, I was gonna give them more milk, but we could do that. <laughs> Rabbit. Uh. Oh. Nice. Uh, any, other, yeah. <laughs> any other stories about testing jokes? I kind of wrapped it up. Yeah, it was a nice, feel like nice little bow, nice little nap. It was a nice little nap. Very, very eloquent uh, one I want to be. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of uh, yeah, after this podcast, you're just going to be sputtering for about 30 yeah. minutes. Uh, <laughs> uh, I say words good sometimes. <laughs> just, uh, here, here's some ice. Here's some ice. Um, <laughs> I just want to add that the worst stand-up show I ever did, James also bombed at. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah! It was great. It was another one of those uh, <laughs> situations where it was like, somebody's putting on that doesn't really do comedy, mm -hmm. and so a bunch of us from Backburner Sketch Group yeah. went over and did some stand-up, and I was doing more of a bit where I was the person who could only say um on stage. Like, I was super oh, nervous. But here's the thing, is that yeah. it's stolen from an idea I came up with. Okay. Uh, there will be a Facebook-esque movie about that, <laughs> where Jesse Eisenberg will play yeah, me and just get, go, um, the entire you get, time. You get famous from just saying, um, on stage. <laughs> hey, Gallagher was a thing, In a so universe where that happens. No, it started from, I came up with, like, a guy that's giving a TED Talk, but he's really nervous about public speaking. And so he just says, um, all the time. And then James was like, person who only says, um? And I was like, you're welcome. Yeah, it was great. It was a perfect um, character. 
But yeah, we were. It was a at a Woody's, which is a pizza place downstairs. It's in the mm-hmm. Union. Um, so it was like an OUAB open mic, and we were like, I we just kind of yeah, you were there. Ooh, it was not a good show. Ooh. Yeah, and I did the same exact set that I had done like two nights before for the first time. I performed in front of a real crowd. And it like I actually did really well, and I was like, let me just do the same thing. And then it was horrible; no one was listening. Even the people putting on the show weren't paying attention, yep. and we're yeah. talking. There was like a free nacho bar that was going on at oh, the same man. time. Yeah, how are you gonna compete? With that? <laughs> right? I know it's so hard. And like I, I did a, a whole bit about how my dad told me I was an accident, but like. <laughs> I'm not, but that's a whole other thing. But that was a good bit, though. But it's a good bit, and I did it at a Planned Parenthood show, so the joke was like, this is Planned Parenthood, but I wasn't planned. And then... <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was like, it went over really well, and then I was like, oh, the next night, and then no one was paying attention except for, like, I don't know, four people and yeah. my friends, and it just seemed like I was just having a weird existential crisis on stage. <laughs> like, why am I here? Like the the good, uh, mark of a good comedy show is when you're <laughs> judged by an applause meter yeah. Oh my gosh, they That's, did that. Yeah, they and did then that. also, the added thing, which made it even better, they were really indecisive, and so they went through each person an applause, and they're like, it all sounded about the same. Let's do it again. I know there was one other and then I just was like, guys, I know I had the least amount of applause. I'm just going to leave the stage. I know, like, they went to do it again, and literally, literally yeah. everyone from Sundown and Backburner just left the stage. <laughs> yeah. Like, we're, we know that we didn't. Oh, that was, that was. It was a. Also, the open this open mic in particular, I think, was three hours long. Oh, too long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we, yeah, we were at, we're the, at the end, end at of the that end. open mic. That's too long. Two yeah. hours is yeah. too long. But it was like, like, all my friends were like, you did really good with this set. Do it again. And I was like, okay. And, and then, then it was a horrible. Yeah, that's how it goes sometimes. <laughs> You'll test something out and it goes great. And then you do it again. And it does not <laughs> and your confidence in the good set yeah. is completely shit. And then that screws up all your confidence for everything you ever yeah. do at like, any time. Oh, yeah. I, it, it gets better. Uh, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, it gets it gets less worse, I wanna yeah. say. You develop, kinda, I, yeah. <laughs> you develop an instinct to be like, no, they're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it kinda it reminds me of like improv and like a lot of the sense when you're doing an improv scene, whenever you're about to say something you think is funny, it won't be. Like I that's at least my from like my experience I've like studied improv a little bit and it's like sure. if you just like say whatever like comes out of your mind like as it, as it goes in I guess <laughs> Yeah. It's like people laugh at that, but if you're like, oh, he said this, I'm gonna say this, it's gonna be hilarious. Get ready for this sweet Get 2004 <laughs> presidential election reference and yeah. then nothing. No, yeah. that's, I mean, that's completely counter to what improv is supposed to be. Yeah. Like, the, the whole idea right. is you're supposed to be reacting honestly. Exactly. And I, the it's worst like, improv I've ever seen is fucking. Ugh, how many Pokemon can we name in this fucking this short form game? It's oh. the Robin Williams game. <laughs> Yeah, I, um, uh, I, I I started doing improv before I ever did stand up. I I found in my high school's team. I did it there for four years, uh, where we didn't know what the fuck we were doing. Where I was doing that same shitty, awful improv that I just mm-hmm. described. Uh, but then in college, I got on to a long form team, and then after my first year, I actually began co directing that team uh, and studied at IO and everything. Mm-hmm. And and like it, everybody shits on improv, but like improv is just like anything else, improv. like stand up or any other art form, like. There's there's bad improv just like there's bad stand up. Yeah. Uh, and I and I don't think it's an abundance by any stretch. Like I, I think good improv is just people doing improv the way it's supposed to be done. Yeah. Just like good stand up is people doing stand up. <laughs> yeah, like that's the done. point is to just say whatever comes to your mind. It's funny because everyone knows you're not prepared when you try and prepare in the middle of a scene. It never works. Exactly. No, and you're you're supposed to react in the moment. Like it's supposed to be a scene unfolding naturally so that like that's why it's funny not because somebody got some stupid fucking reference in Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, nobody remembered who played team wolf when like that's not the funny it's funnier if you forget who played the main character of team wolf like if someone's like hey you're the main character of team wolf and then someone's like duh that was bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah I don't think they should react saying, duh. <laughs> but, that's almost never a good that's reaction. A, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's probably why I didn't make the that's, improv teams. That's I just why. went, duh, after everything. <laughs> well, oh, the, like, the beauty bro. of improv is, like, you decide what's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like, if somebody says, like, all right, you're the star of Team Wolf, there's no reason you can't decide that that was fucking Ronald Reagan. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. and within the context of that scene, that world, like, Ronald Reagan was the star of Teen Wolf. And then you can go from there. Oh my gosh, I so do. 
Oh, no, I, got, I don't know much about Team Wolf or Ronald Reagan, but I would riff on that for hours. <laughs> but that's it. I mean, like, that that was the beauty of, like, the one thing I missed about doing improv was, like, doing that world building, because the most fun was getting decided. was like, the, like, we get to create a universe that doesn't have the same rules, doesn't have the same culture that ours does. Like, what's, what's true in this world? Maybe people are racist against left-handed people. Maybe. You know, like, uh, and if that's the Maybe case... Maybe it rains like, left -handed. What does that mean? Yeah, it, and it's, I, I don't know. It, it's <laughs> fun, and, and it honestly, it's one of the things that I liked most about doing improv, was, like, building those worlds, finding out what the rules were, finding out, like, what the customs were, what kind of characters would inhabit that world. And, and, and I think bad improv is the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. Well... You ever do like an improv show through like Whiskey Bear or no? I I have not. It's been two. Jeez, it's been three years. Also, maybe you should just explain what Whiskey Bear is. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> oh yeah. I don't, I don't think sure. we did that. No. Uh, Whiskey Bear <laughs> Comedy is basically uh, a brand, an umbrella that I started in the summer of 2015. Uh, basically, just something that I could produce all of my comedy shows under, so people would see that and be like, oh, hey, this is a Whiskey Bear show. I know this is going to be a good show. I know they book quality performers. I know they put on good shows. I know they're a lot of fun. And it came largely from stuff that I was seeing in other cities. Like, I go to Cleveland and Knoxville a lot. Uh, Knoxville, kind of, a lot of their stuff is under was under Scruffy City Comedy. Uh, now it's under a uh, kind of production company called Rain Shine that a couple friends of mine run. Cleveland has Accidental Comedy, which mm -hmm. produces a festival. They produce a lot of amazing shows. Uh, like, they'll, they'll bring big headliners through. Like, they did a pop-up show with, like, Hannibal Burris a year ago. Mm -hmm. All this really cool stuff. And that was kind of the idea with Whiskey Bear, because it, it kind of ties to that whole Batman, like, the symbol and not a man thing. It's like, mm -hmm. Dustin Meadows is putting on a show. Who gives a fuck? Like, Whiskey mm -hmm. Bear is like, oh, Whiskey Bear is putting on a festival. What's that about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and I think it's been working. Like, uh, there's been growing pains, and there's been there's been peaks and valleys with it, like anything else. Because that's just comedy. But I, I feel like, on the whole, it has been a successful experiment. We're we're rolling into our second festival, which I'm super stoked about. Um, the shows the shows have been great from the start. It's largely attendance that has been an issue for some of them. But, like, some of them, you know, we'll get, like, maybe a dozen people out. And then, like, last week we did my hot dog show, and we had 40 fucking people come out for the dumbest mm -hmm. thing I've ever created. <laughs> <laughs> that was um, fun, though. On paper, very dumb idea, but, oh, but such a great show. It. It's people such a great it. show. And, and, like, and I'm, and I'm glad that people love it. Like, I, I love that it gets the reaction it does. Like, I, the the thing that frustrates me is, like, of all the shows that I do, like, Pop Culture Mixtape is my favorite yeah, show. Yeah, do you want to just explain the different shows real quick? Yeah, so, uh, Hot Dog is, uh, well, Hot Dog, a comedy show slash hot dog eating contest is the name of the show. Basically, the way it runs is that every comedian on the show is given some kind of a rule or a tick that uh, I tell the audience before the comic goes on. The comic doesn't know what their thing is. And anytime they do that, say... It, Peter Brick is a, uh, a very physically expressive performer. So the first time, as you can tell, uh, yeah, podcast, as you can tell from this audio podcast, yes, uh, <laughs> so, get up on the level. So the, the first time I had Peter on the show, his tick was, you know, anytime like that he's like wildly physically expressive, I would sound an air horn or a whistle, and he would get a hot dog that he would then have to eat as he continued to do his set. Uh, Peter actually started this most recent show <laughs> with a deficit of hot dogs uh, because we ran out of hot dogs at the previous show. Uh, being antagonistic on the last one. <laughs> <laughs> you deserved every fucking hot dog you got. Is that what the couple's time. therapy session told you guys? <laughs> you know, exactly. I'm like, we're trying to save our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every, every day is a gift, darling. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there's no hot response hot. from Peter. <laughs> <laughs> there's More uh, wieners. <laughs> <laughs> Page and Sigmund Freud. Uh, so there's that. Uh, I run a show called New Noise, the third Friday of every month with my friend Pat Deering, where that show, every performer gets 15 minutes, and once they do that 15 minutes, they are never allowed to perform that material on that show again. Ooh. So Pat and I have done five of them now, and now I'm to the point where I need to start writing a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, but... But the cool thing about that is even if you come to that show, like, for a year straight, no matter what, you're never going to see the same show twice. Even if you see the same exact lineup 
three different times, it's never going to be the same show. Yeah. Uh, so we've got that. And then we have the Pop Culture Mixtape, which is a show that I created. It's three years old now. It's the show that I've been doing the longest. Um, but Pop Culture Mixtape, every month we have, like, a different topic or kind of theme, you know, like, say, Game of Thrones, DC Comics, Disney, video games, music, stuff like that. And the only rule is that there's no stand-up allowed. So everybody on the show will perform... Uh, spoken word, character sketches, um, PowerPoints, like mixed media type stuff. And, and it's a lot of fun. I think it's a really cool idea for a show. And I don't think anyone else, especially here, does anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, I have a very personal attachment to it because I'm kind of a big pop culture nerd. Um, and, and that's the show more than any of them that I've been pushing the most, and still, I don't feel like it's it's kind of gotten its due yet. Mm -hmm. We also do the the, the roasts. Of the oh characters. yes, the character roast. Yes, those well, are a lot of fun too. Those are fun. Jackie, um, do you want to explain that? Yeah. The roasts. Uh, yeah, uh, the roasts are literally just. Uh, it's kind of a mix of the pop culture mixtape and a roast because we pick like a pop culture topic. Like the last one we just did. Uh, which sold out was the roast of the Disney villains because it would sell out because it's Disney. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. So we all dressed up uh, and our character was various Disney villains and we basically went up uh, in that type of roast where there's no one set person we're roasting. It's just us roasting literally everyone else on the panel. Um, so we would go up and do that and we do like some different ones. Like we've done DC before, we did the Disney Princesses before. Star Wars. Star Wars. Ooh, Star Wars was probably my favorite one. I was there for the Star Wars show. So those are fun too. Mm -hmm. And those are those seem to be more popular than a pop culture mixtape, even though they're very similar things. Yeah. It's, just, yeah. it's like one degree of separation. Yeah. 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 Well that's the thing. I like I know that like character roasts existed before I ever started doing them here, but they weren't really thing that happened around here. I, I did one for the first time three years ago when I went to a Scruffy City Comedy Festival in Knoxville and uh, one of the shows, they did two character roasts. They did the roast of Superman and they did the roast of Tim Burton and I decided to do the roast of Tim Burton. I performed as Orson Welles and it, it was so much fun and I came back I was like why is no one doing this mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's such a good so idea fun. too yeah. and, they're, and they're a lot of fun like, as long even, as you know the universe slash characters yes. well, and, and that's <laughs> the thing like even I, I think for the most part everyone that I put on these shows is pretty good about not getting too inside baseball mm -hmm. with yeah. this stuff because like uh, there's definitely been like some shows like I know we did the roast of Batman, where Tate just went on a real big old DC nerd rant, which was super funny, oh, was awesome. but was uh, means nothing if you don't know shit about DC. But I think for the most part, everybody's good enough at keeping kind of general, so like even people aren't like huge fans, they can follow along and mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. Yeah, like me specifically, as I went to the Star Wars one, and like. I watched them a lot when I was a kid, but I haven't in a while. But I still got a lot of the jokes, even though like. Well, the, a couple characters, I'm like, I don't even remember who you are. Mm -hmm. But I still, like, thought it was really funny. And, like, the, I, at no point did I feel alienated from not from not knowing anything. Good. And, that, <laughs> and that's, that's definitely, I know we've had that problem a couple of times with the pop culture mixtape. Although, yeah. I don't think that's been a lot. No. And yeah. those usually, those topics are usually so broad. Exactly. Yeah. And, that, and that's the whole reason we I do that. And, and like... Lately, I've been trying to branch out into some not like as niche things. Like the most recent show we did was a pop up video show, mm -hmm. where each performer selected a music video and then just kind of like riffed and gave like running commentary throughout. That was fun, and mm -hmm. and it, it was again it was a lighter turnout than I would like, but I think it's one of the best shows we've done. Yeah, like, I also like that sometimes you guys do like a free for all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like everybody the... picks their topics. Those yeah. I'm going to do those a lot more this year as well. Mm -hmm. So it's like you never know what you're gonna get. Mm -hmm. It's a grab bag of pop culture. I really hope one time it's just all Suicide Squad stuff, <laughs> um, and it's yeah, just like a coincidence. It's just like everybody's like, I did a piece about Harley Quinn. I did a piece about Jared Leto's forehead. Oh. I did one about Slipknot because he can climb anything. <laughs> Except I got really excited because I thought you were just talking about the band Slipknot. For a no, no, that's what everybody thinks when I say Slipknot, which is so weird. <laughs> well, I mean. One of them didn't die after five seconds of screen time. <laughs> That's yeah. true. The man who could climb anything until he tried. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was his downfall as he tried. He tried. Um, real quick, before we get into like, 10 out of 10 and plugs, is I wanted to ask, like, I know like, you guys have been on a touring 
mm-hmm. stint recently. Yeah. It's like yeah. Um, performing in different cities and like if you change your material via <coughs> the city you're in. Uh, not a ton. As far as my material goes, it's pretty out of hand and mm-hmm. absurd <laughs> and weird. I've, I've noticed the more that I do it, especially from doing these like string of shows, that 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 can be pretty universal. Yeah. <laughs> Universally appreciated. It's like, yeah. yeah, that guy's weird. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also cool. It's like, your comedy transcends <laughs> location. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everybody, we can... We can unify the country. <laughs> yeah. 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 That, that Peter Brick is just really weird. Brick by Brick, we'll make the country whole again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, speaking to that, I know the very first show we did on the road uh, last month was in Huntsville, Alabama, uh, down south. And pretty early in my set, uh, I do a joke where I, I talk about a time that I did a pro-choice fundraiser a couple of years ago. And... Uh, Good chunk of the crowd, not on board with that. <laughs> but like, they, like they weren't, like they weren't shitty about it. Like they weren't combative. Like some crowds I've seen have been. Uh, but like they just, they very clearly like we don't agree with this. We're just gonna sit here. But my my mentality <laughs> has always been that you shouldn't have to tailor your act. Mm-hmm. Like uh, because you know those jokes, they're very much me. Like I've spent time kind of coning my comedic voice. Uh, the, these jokes are things that I that I have to say that I want to say, and like just because a crowd's beliefs don't align with mine, I don't feel like I should have to fucking yeah. alter my stuff or trim. Like I, I should be able to do my material as is. And, like you could not believe the same things a person believes and still laugh. Like, yeah, but I also know like you because you went to Chicago or New York. Uh, or Chicago. Both? I lived in Chicago for about four months. Oh, okay. Real briefly. I was gonna say like I don't know if there's like a difference between your comedy there and here, but I mean that's a uh, short period of time. <laughs> well, that, and that's the thing. Like when I was in Chicago, I was I was there for such a short time that I didn't really do any shows. I was just doing open mics. Mm-hmm. Um, I I I don't think there's a lot of weight to the idea that comedy is different anywhere. No, like no. I, I think the perception of it for sure. Um, you know, like, I, I think bigger cities, there's definitely more of kind of a, a doggy dog attitude about it where there's not, there's more vested in individual as opposed to the community and the scene mm-hmm. as a whole. But, like, a, a good comedy is good comedy. Exactly. Yeah. But, and that's, I think that's all it is. You know, you can find it in New York, you can find it in L.A., you can find it here, you can find it in fucking Huntsville, Alabama. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, probably not. <laughs> no, that actually, Huntsville has a phenomenal scene. Really? Um, the the guys that set us up, they run a monthly show called Epic Comedy Hour uh, in a repurposed mill that has been converted into a massive art space. Oh. Uh, basically, what they're doing here in Columbus with Franklinton, with like 400 West Ridge, and like kind of turning trying to turn that into an arts community, they have done that in a massive abandoned paper mill. There's, like, artisan shops. There is a black box theater called the Flying Monkey Theater Mm -hmm. that seats 300, and they pack it out almost every time. Um, Me and my buddy Mike were on tour last fall. We did that show. There were 150 people at that show, and they came up to us after, and they was like, hey, man, sorry, this was a light night for us. I was like, this (laughs) is a fucking light night? (sighs) This is is amazing. It's insane that there are, like, these pockets... Um, yeah. Where like you wouldn't expect those things to exist, but Huntsville's a fucking amazing city mm-hmm. for comedy. That's like, awesome. They've heard a lot that Atlanta is actually f- Atlanta's fantastic phenomenal. for like, almost all comedies. Atlanta's a film I, too. I, yeah, I, film too. I've been to Atlanta twice in the last year, done five shows there over the two times I was there, and every show was fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. Like two of the shows I did were just booked open mics, and they were packed out. The crowd was on board. I was like, fuck, man, if just. If we had one open mic that was that consistent, holy shit. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's insane. Uh, Atlanta, actually, Atlanta and L.A. are, like, my short list for where I go next. Because mm-hmm. uh, they're, they're both solid cities. Yeah. Do you think it's more of a problem at this point, maybe in Columbus, of, like, space? I think, I think largely it's kind of a critical mass at this point. Mm-hmm. Like, we have more open mics than we need. You know, there's like, oh, hey, there's like four open mics on this night. I was like, hey, why don't you give us an open mic on a night that we don't have any? Yeah. Yeah. Because like, like, and I love this city. I love living here. But Columbus has this real fucking obnoxious thing where it pats itself on the back all the goddamn time. And it's Mm -hmm. exhausting. 
you know, and it's like, oh, this is a cool city to make art in. Like, there's all this cool shit going on. I was like, then where the fuck are these people? Like, why aren't they yeah. at these shows? Yeah. Yeah. You know? And there's, like, so much. It's just all spread out. Exactly. And, and a lot of it gets lost in the shuffle. Mm-hmm. Like, there, there's fucking phenomenal bands here. Mm-hmm. You know, like, and, like nationally recognized acts. Like, that, like, even beyond, like, a 21 Pilots, you've got someone like Lydia Loveless, like, who's fucking huge, who has, like, this, you know, it's just widespread, uh... But, you know, like, how many people here got on board with that, like, until, like, she was doing an AV club undercover yeah. series or yeah. something. Right. You know, like, there's all this cool shit happening in these people's backyard, mm-hmm. and, and for one reason or another, they either don't know or don't care. Yeah. Like, Columbus is really good at, like, hiding it, like, in various places. Yeah. I, I don't even think so that they actively hide it. Yeah. I think it's just hard to get people to give a shit. Mm-hmm. It is. You know, like, I, I understand why, like, like, I got to open for Tignataro last year, and that show was almost completely sold out. And I understand why that show was sold out, because there's fucking Tignataro. Yeah. yeah. And just the same like, thing Pat Oswalt was here a yeah. month or two ago. Just, like, recently, the Buckeye Stand-Up cr- um, Club held a show, and mm-hmm. they have shows every month, and yeah. it's like... I think they said they averaged, like, 50 people, which is mm-hmm. really good. Absolutely. But they had um, Dan Mintz yeah, from Mintz. Bob Burgers, mm-hmm. and they had a 700-person crowd. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that's what <laughs> that's happens all it when, takes. It's all it takes. Like, you, you pull a nationally recognized name, and all yeah. of a sudden, people give a shit. Yeah. 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 But it was really cool, because it was, like, we've seen them perform, like, all these small crowds. Yeah. And yeah. Like, yeah. No, and the perform, Donato's basement. And the and Donato's like, basement. And so seeing them perform for, like, I don't know, I felt like just so proud of them and I only yeah. know a handful yeah. <laughs> and I was no, like they I, did I, it that's an awesome <laughs> thing like last yeah. year they had Dan St. Germain here yeah, and yeah. I actually got to do that show and it was probably 150 I think mm-hmm. uh, yeah. and it was still like it was a super fun show it was like these guys like bust their ass they like did, every yeah. month like they put on quality shows mm-hmm. and, and it, it just sucks to like so then, uh, you guys the, have the, both performed for Buckeye Stand Up. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've liked it a, a lot. Of times. They've yeah. had me on a number of those. And yeah. it's always been yeah. the last. They always put on a good show. Yeah. Like the the bummer, the thing that sucks is like, I don't know that there's going to be a carryover from it. Yeah, yeah. which because yeah. like oh all these like hundreds of people came out to see the show. I was like, but like they've got was, a show yeah. next Friday like in Donato's basement. Like how many of you are going to? They go have the variety that? show coming up. Yeah, like and th- and that's the thing. <laughs> Because like, it was the same thing like with uh, the festival last year. Like We had a lot of people come out, people that I'd never seen before. And it's always good when you get faces you don't recognize at your shows. That means yeah. new people are coming out, new people mm-hmm. care. But what people don't understand is like things like Buckeye Stand Up bringing Dan Mintz here. Things like the Whiskey Bear Comedy Festival. Like Those don't happen without comedy going on the rest of the year. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like where you need to like, well, as re- like fine-tune your everything. Yeah, and... <laughs> What is this? It's just so like, eloquently uh, phrased. Fine tune your everything. That was great. <laughs> like and, and and there are like there's a handful of like whiskey bear shows. Like I've got like four or five regulars that come to almost every single show, and that's mm-hmm. fucking awesome. You know to know like I can count on these few people to be at almost every show. But like, but you'd almost rather whole new faces. I mean, I, I'm I'm very grateful for the regulars. I absolutely hope they right, keep yeah. coming to shows. Well, but yeah, yeah, but I but I want more people want to find more, out yeah. about it too, and that's. Cause like I'm garbage at marketing and that kind of stuff. So like that's stuff that I'm trying to get better at this year, trying to figure out like better approaches for, and, and it, it just sucks. Like part of the reason that like I'm eventually gonna move is because I have to. Right. Yeah. Like I I can't do this professionally like by staying here. Like I have to go somewhere else. Right. But you know like the time that I am here, I I want to build something that's cool, something that people are going to remember, something that people are going to enjoy before I ride off into the sunset, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the, like, not really the saddest, I, but the most disappointed I was, was when we did um, the Roast of Wolfman around yeah. Halloween. It was also in a pizza basement, and I thought everyone's routines were great, and everyone mm-hmm. had fun with each other, and it was awesome, and there were about five people in the audience, mm-hmm. and most of them were pretty drunk, and that's yeah. just, you're having a good time, but at the same time, you start to question who cares, and yeah. yeah, Yeah, and you hit those moments, and for me, what I've pulled out of it is, okay, the show didn't go great, but how have I developed as a performer from it? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I got ideas, and I played them out on stage, so... Even if it's a weak show, 
usually I'm trying to find a way of just like, okay, well, I feel like <laughs> maybe I'm a little bit funnier yeah. Yeah. Yeah, than I was when I first got up. I mean, uh, at this point for me, there's at least three times a year where I think about quitting comedy. <laughs> uh, it's which, normal. which is down significantly from how it used to be. Though. Nice. Yeah. And, and I think it's that. Like, it's, it's real oh, no, easy. I mean, really? Was I don't know. I don't <laughs> know. Well, no, I, I mean, it's real easy. Like, all it takes is one bad set to completely fucking derail you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that, that um, open mic I talked about at Woody's, I literally was like, okay, well, that's the last time I performed stand up, but now I'm doing it. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. I think that's, that's what I've said to James every time I do a bad stand-up. I'm like, this is the, I'm never going to do it again, and I'm mm-hmm. doing it in like And then an he hour. was like, you want five? And I was like, I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Give, me, give me that five. Give me that five. <laughs> and the thing, it's like, it's a rush, too, because like, it's, you know, when it's good, it's fucking great. Yeah. But when it's bad, oh, oh, it's bad. Yeah, like, yeah. I, like the, the set I said that the for Planned Parenthood that it, went well for me. I was the opener. Mm-hmm. So for the whole show, I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. It's like on a super high. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, do you want to do 10 out of 10? Yeah, we can yeah. do a 10 out of 10. So I'm going to, let me Wait, look. No, let me do it. Oh. Okay, so 10 out of 10, but is a game that we play. Um, it started from Jackie and James did it. Um, we've adapted it into the podcast and also Backburner does it. But anyways, it's not important. But 10 out of 10, but, so basically you have to imagine, like, your perfect person, like, relationship-wise, um, any significant other there. 10 out of 10, perfect for you in oh, every, no. in every way. I was gonna open some demons. No, no, you know, we don't have to talk about it. Yeah, but, it's um, my birthday! <laughs> <laughs> but, like, they're, they're your perfect person, except for they have a fatal flaw, and that's where the butt comes, comes in. in. Yeah. So, like, some examples are 10 out of 10, uh... But they have peanut butter for hair, and you have to decide if that's worth it. Or for 10 hair. out of 10. My peanut favorite one was 10 hair. out of 10, but they can't go downstairs. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, that's God, a good mine, one. <laughs> mine are going to be too realistic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I think Jackie said she yeah, had Jackie's one. Yeah, Jackie's going to do it. And uh, Jackie's going to ask it, or propose the 10 out of 10. She is going to answer all the questions. Any so quest- anything she says is going to be canon in the world that this person exists. Yes. yes. And then when she stops questions... Anything she says towards that person is not real. It's not canonical. Yeah. And then we'll answer at the end yes or no to yes that. Yes or no. Okay, so the one I came up with on the way here. Uh, 10 out of 10, perfect person, but they are just, they are physically incapable of remembering what your name is, and they'll always call you something that's slightly close, like Dustin. Uh, they might call you Durston all the time. And, and you can tell them as many times that that's not your name, but they're not going to remember it, and they're not going to know that they're doing something wrong. Mm-hmm. Actually, I have an unfair advantage here. I worked at a summer camp for people with disabilities, and I had to work with a guy for a week who had no short-term memory. Oh, wow. Um, Could not remember my name. Uh, <laughs> can you remember your last name? Uh, sure. We'll just go with first name. That's weird. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, how often Wait, is your good. sweetie going to call you Brick? <laughs> Well, we don't know who it is. <laughs> we don't know. I would. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's, it's confined no entirely. <laughs> it's confined entirely to your first name. Nothing else. Yeah, yeah. like uh, could they just like that's what they call you? Yeah. I mean, just, they uh, could, but do you really want to be Moliterno? Yeah. Eventually, I'd be their last name. Oh. oh. Now you're one of those women. <laughs> All right, way to tear me down, Jackie. Jackie Sorry. Please, there's no place for your just, internalized misogyny. One of, the, <laughs> Come on, Jackie. one of the only episodes that we passed the Bechdel test and you just tear me right down. No, no. We're gonna slowly going to scoot away. Fighting over this fictional man who can't remember your first name. Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> he's not even real. <laughs> but can you imagine, no, like you're on, on your wedding day and he's like holding your hand. Oh. He looks in your eyes and he says, I love you lozenge. And you're just like, oh, mm, lozenge. Not Ugh. quite, not quite, dear. Um, oh, what? Man. Wait, but if you had a nick, like if you had like a cute pet name, mm-hmm. if he can't they, remember your real name, I don't think he can remember your pet name. I think name. it has. She, to is, in, she is in charge of the cannon. She is in charge. It's not me this time. <laughs> They're not a pet name person. They just don't. They don't roll person. like that. Oh, oh man. Because I was like, if they were just called. What if my pet name was Laws? <laughs> what if I legally changed my name to something slightly off my name? Like, my, I changed my name to Jorms. And they're like, hey, James. I'm like, oh, no, got it wrong. <laughs> it's Jorms. It's well, Jorms. Well, it's something different every time, though. you got to keep changing yeah, your you name. Yeah, you got to keep changing Every it. time they address you, which is going to get exhausting. Yeah, I'm just going to okay, continuously yeah. send letters to is the it, government. Is it like a repeat? Is it like the same off name, or is it different every time? It's different every time. Yeah. Different off name every time. Yep. 
That's gonna get really. See, I had like a little. Sex. I was. Yeah. Trying. <laughs> oh, That's the first time point. you call me the wrong name in the sack, you're done. Yeah, but it's so close too. So you wonder if it's your evil twin that they're calling for. Ooh. <laughs> See, I had like this uh, similar as like I was um, an so assistant. Repeatedly called you no, no, no. the wrong name in bed. Yeah. <laughs> no, not in bed. But like I <laughs> was like assistant coach for a softball team, and one of like the little girl's sister called me the wrong name all the time, like on purpose. It was like a bit, and the, for the then she was like Lemon. I was like, yep, and then she just called me Lemon for, like, the rest of the summer. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. So I'm used to it. Good pretty rock Oh, man. I, yeah. I've been called it's Dusty not, and Justin not, enough throughout my life yeah. that I would not stand for this. <laughs> mm-hmm. See, like, I some people pronounce my name Lauren, and Lauren? that's just a thing I deal La- with. Who pronounces it Lauren? <laughs> Lauren. Yeah. Well, like, yeah, what? I Are had, we in this weird universe? There was, there was two of my high school teachers. The one, anytime she read my name, would say Lauren. And the other one, she would read it fine. But what if I saw her in the hallway? She'd be like, Lauren. I'm like, that's not a name. Were they <laughs> mid-stroke? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, two separate teachers, too. Very weird. Mm, was there... Oh, man. My, my roommate calls me Loren, but that's just her. Loren. Mm-hmm. Loren. Okay. So I call her Megan, because her name's Megan. I also have a hard time pronouncing Megan. <laughs> You just nailed it. Yeah, right you there. just nailed it. Well, because you weren't, she wasn't was focused on it. it. If she thinks about Wait. it, she can't do it. Mm, okay. Think about like, Megan. Megan. No, I did it. You did it. It's, I say Megan. Like, oh, May. Like, yeah. M A Y G. Well, I don't know why we're focusing on this. Shit, man, it's all fruit. <laughs> <laughs> it all sounds the same in the end. Yeah, I mean, I just, but like enough people have made fun of me about it that I'm very self conscious, so I just call her Megan. <laughs> Steer into the skit. Anyways, back to the skin. <laughs> I think I could. I don't know if I could do it. I, I don't want to lock in my answer right now. See, like, it's spe- I mean. It's all speculation. <laughs> I'm calling it no. No? Absolutely no. not. Dustin's a firm no. no After what having discovered it, it would be bedroom problems. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I've had enough girls cheat on me that saying the wrong Ooh. name. Ooh. That's a lock in. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. True. Told you we we're gonna we we're gonna yeah. confront some demons today. No, yeah. We, <laughs> we got there. I mean, yeah, we hit, we hit it. Guys, yeah, we did it. We can end up <laughs> We hit the we hit the demon. Um Oh you said demon singular, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> um Got a lot of dirt. I don't know. It's always a cop out, but mine's always I'd try. <laughs> you would always try. I'd try. I'd, I'd try. test it out. Good on you. Yeah. yeah love's beautiful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's a journey. But also it might be just so lonely. I'm like, I'll try it. <laughs> Hey, Either way, whatever, the whatever whatever way you want to pick. Is it maybe I love love or maybe I'm just Desperate for it. Ah, uh, sometimes they're the same thing. Yeah, the really, same thing. Not really that far apart. Oh, I hit the thing. I tried. Such Thank a you. fine line. Yeah. Peter yeah. also said he would try it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, are we all talking about the same problem? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tell you yeah. I'll go this. for it. I'll go for it. <laughs> yeah. They just keep you know? calling you paper. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey pen. Hey pen. <laughs> they just get in the school supplies and <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can call them the wrong name and, like, unintentionally, like, subliminally shame them out of it. <laughs> yeah, you could just do it back. Maybe it's just, like, a cute little thing. I, I, I think that you guys just I call it we're all just, name. like, not looking at the obvious solution is we just wear a name tag. Yeah, oh. but they would pronounce it wrong. They would still say it wrong. Well, no. You well, no, have the, the phonetical, the thing, like... Because like, like, the thing <laughs> was is they don't remember it, they but if they are told... Like if okay, so like the wedding thing, if the part of like oh the repeat after me was if sh- they said my name correctly, wouldn't they repeat it correctly? They would still no. do Lorenzo. They just, they just like leaves Lorenzo. Oh, okay, that's gone. that was my dad's. <laughs> no, that's oh, my no, dad. I went somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> that's weird. Um, more demons. No, more just demons. kidding. I have a good relationship with my father. <laughs> I was gonna say I thought you had a nice. Family. I had an You're like one of the few comedians oh, who likes nice. your family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I get my sadness from elsewhere. <laughs> okay, okay, let's get out. <laughs> run, run! Wait, who didn't answer? I, I said I, I tried. I didn't give an actual answer. I said tentatively yes. I'm going to go yes, because I am also just bad at names. Okay, Jaleel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we all know. <laughs> okay, <Why>? Jorky. <laughs> See, I would just do it back. It would just be a fun, cute thing. Yeah, I would enjoy it because I think of all these fun ways... To, like, mispronounce their name. Oh, okay. oh, man, what if they just think they're making fun of them being an asshole then? Oh, oh no. Yeah, no, because like... no, then it would be like, oh, they don't remember my name either. Because it's something they deal with, too. Yeah, because they have to be cognizant of the are fact they that they can't they, Yeah, are this, they is, the, that this is the question that hits every Most 10 out of 10. Most 10 out of 10s are not self-aware. <laughs> are they aware that they are doing this? They are not self-aware. Yep, nope, not bothered. Uh, I'm just going to wear a name tag. So I'm just going to wear a name tag. <laughs> I'll find a 7 who can remember my fucking name. <laughs> <A seven. laughs> 
go yeah, wear a graphic tee. Right <laughs> this guy. Like, you just around. become a cartoon <laughs> character with the same we outfit. We've established the name. Yeah, every day he opens his mouth. Wait, doesn't it work? Wait, Peter, what would you do? Just wear a name to Oh, okay, that's a good idea. I haven't heard that yet. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just like him going into his closet and it's just the same shirt over and over again. I've been, I've been like Arthur. Yellow shirt, just, blue jeans, brown glasses. It just says your name right across. Every, every episode. You'd have a fancy like, one that's just like a suit with his name. <laughs> that's for the wedding day. See, like for yeah. girls, you can wear like a necklace with your name on that's it. True. And that's only a little bit weird. Name tag yeah. works. I'm just saying. <laughs> Name tag He's works. gonna try it. Wait, what are you gonna do again? <laughs> I, I'm not even telling you. It's a secret. I'll you you never know. I would go. Jack, with, yeah, what's your answer? Yeah, I would. I would answer. You see, my problem is I am the fourth child in a family of all girls, all with the names that start with J. Oh. Mm. We have Jessica, Jamie, Julie, Jackie. I have never been called my real name. So it's a real big I've never pet done peeve it. I refuse. Me. Oh, I was gonna. I was. It could have gone either way. Like you're either used to it. Oh no. Oh, I hate it. Uh, a lot of times people would call me other people's names. Like people I don't even look like. They'll just call me their name, and I'll be like, I hate you for like the <laughs> rest of the time I know you. Didn't Colin used to do that? Oh yeah, Colin used to call me Ivy all the time, and Classic I would literally Colin. take oh. him aside and Classic be like, Colin. Don't do this. This is horrible to people. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I call her Natalie Portman. <sighs> oh, so obnoxious. <laughs> I'm gonna go with no. Okay. My dad would mix up my brother with the dog. Cut to you're having a dog and he mixes his brother. It was hey. just the dog the whole time. <laughs> the dog in like a t shirt and shorts. <laughs> Did you leave your brother in the car at the grocery store? The <laughs> it's okay though, he's turned out way Quiet, more. Sam, we'll be right back. <laughs> Quiet! <laughs> George's name was Max. Oh, <laughs> uh, that Max could be no, your brother. Your brother's name was Max. The dog's name was Sam. Oh, man, I think I have You need a name tag. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time. You've been your calling your brother, brother the wrong name. Yeah, that, he didn't use a name tag. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense now that he didn't go to school with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. we always left him in a kennel on vacation. <laughs> Oh man, now I'm imagining him actually being your brother. I know. Yeah. I'm just <laughs> imagining like a teenage boy in a kennel. It's like, bye. Aww. Come back in a week. All right. It's all okay. right. He's a happy person. <laughs> it's punching up. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was a fun one. Yeah. Thanks, Jackie. Yeah. You're, You're also welcome. the only one who's ever submitted one. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was a little upset that I submitted my last one, because I'm like, oh, that one's my favorite, but I, they already... You want to... We just want to get, like, a quick one, just to gauge oh, yeah. interest. Okay, so the, the last one I submitted was 10 out of 10, but um, in your peripheral vi- vi- vision, if I can talk, anytime they're standing there, they look like a lamp. But if you turn back and you look at them, it's just them again. But if you look away, it looks like a lamp is standing, like, right where they are. It looks like they're a lamp. I can live with that. I'd go with that, yeah. I can live with double takes. I'll take the psychological. It's fun, because then it's like a cartoon you're living in. It's like, what, what? Oh, no, I'm good. But then we we realized that it would be hard to find them if you're in a lamp museum. Yeah. You just have to keep spinning around. That's fine. (laughs) Spinning around is a small price to pay for love. Yeah, and also, when are you at the lamp museum? Yeah. You're not I'm in not. Huntington, Alabama, where I, there's a... Yeah, here's the thing is I live in the lamp museum. Oh, no. Oh, man. That's Crazy. your perfect scenario. So much light. It's my perfect scenario is my 10 out of 10 turns into a lamp, and I also live in a lamp museum. Oh, uh, what a life. <laughs> oh, lamps. Oh, boy. Beautiful. Great. Do you want to go to... Is there anything else, or do you want to go into uh, plugs? Oh, oh, I have a 10 out of 10. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Hit us. Oh. Uh, 10 out of 10, but they never laugh at your jokes. <gasps> We've done this, I think. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I'm a hard no. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a hard no, too. No, it was, to it was very it. close. It was, they, it sounds like they're doing, like, a fake laugh. Oh. And I think that's what it was. Yeah. Where so you, it you couldn't really tell if it was a genuine. They're just out there and they don't laugh at your jokes because they don't think you're funny. Oh, they, no. Do they, no, do they not laugh at your stand-up or they do not laugh at you? They do not find you amusing. Oh, that's oh. Is this about to take a turn? Oh. Uh, I'm just saying, for a summer, I dated a girl, <laughs> yep. and fuck that trick. See, like, so, see, I don't think I could handle that. That's no. like... No, how could you? That's my yeah. favorite trait. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's contrary to my 10 out of 10 yeah. no, that yeah. That's whole, literally... That's how I fall in love with someone, is they laugh at something I say. Same. Same. Yeah. It could be a stranger. Yeah. That's, like, yeah. the biggest thing. I was like, hey, this girl's cute. Does she think I'm funny? 
No. All right, yeah, she's cute. Yeah, she cute. <laughs> yeah, one time... Uh, uh, Sometimes it's the opposite. I don't think someone's cute. Then they laugh at what I right. say. And I'm like, right, oh, right, now cute. I want to marry you. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I thought was, especially I just started watching uh, Crashing Pete Holmes. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, and there's a... I think, like, in the third episode, his wife basically asked him, was like, if I told you right now, like, we could get back together, but you had to give up stand-up, would you do it? Oh. And I was like, No. 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 Like, granted, his character sucks right now in the show, but, mm-hmm. like, I wouldn't do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm a hard no for this. Mm-hmm. I think it was bad to ask a room of comedians. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like that idea. No, I don't like it either. It's I don't like thinking about it. It's kind of the happiest thing I've had. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, Peter said it was his favorite trait, but it's actually his only trait. <laughs> He's got nothing else to go on. How I justify my existence. <laughs> garbage every other aspect of life. Great shoulders, pretty yeah. funny, that's it. Yeah, yeah he Talks. stepped on a child on the yeah. way in. And then threw a kitten in a wood chipper. Yeah. Why they have wood chippers at the Union right now, But then he told a great know. airline food joke right oh, after yeah. it. And, and it was like, what? we don't even care about the kitten. I read his name tag and I fell in love. <laughs> it's great. Alright, any last ones or we can go into plugs. Nope, going into plugs. Yeah, Anyone I'm, got plugs? I'm really funny, and you can <laughs> follow me on Twitter if you like Twitter. Have you tweeted recently? No. I <laughs> follow you. Have you tweeted ever? <laughs> that's, a, tweeted. that's a good plug. It's something you don't do. <laughs> yeah. but Those are like, all my plugs. Sometimes I throw tweets out, and they just, like, they stick in the abyss, and there's no reaction. <laughs> like, I feel like yeah. Jackie tweets twice a week, and I see her tweets, but yeah. never you. No. Uh, well, I'll start tweeting. You can follow me at, at Peter Brick, and I promise I'll tweet. How about that? that does that sound <laughs> all right. good? If he, if he gets all 20 of our listeners. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we had 30 them. listeners hey. last week. We did, so. actually. Oh, hey, yeah. 30 more followers. 30. That would really tip me over <laughs> into glory. You need to find that is worth at Peter Brick, don't forget. <laughs> and I have an archive of tweets, so you, you can oh. go back and look at the oh. 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 juicy ones that I've left. <laughs> I'm gonna retweet everything Peter's ever tweeted. All those, all those hot takes on is the dress blue or is the dress blue? <laughs> yeah, that was sweet. Those llamas when they escaped, oh, yeah. really these, go after them. Those timely zingers. <laughs> That was cutting edge at the top. <laughs> I can't not believe Miley Cyrus twerked. It was yeah. awful. Got some great takes on Mitt Romney, y'all. <laughs> well, now I have to make the disclaimer. Those are none of my tweets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone's like, nope, not doing no, it. I'm scrolling through your tweets right now. <laughs> oh, they're, uh, they're great. I wish you would. <laughs> <laughs> Any other plugs, or is that it? <laughs> oh, I've got, I've got yeah, all yeah. the plugs. Oh, yeah, um, the real... Effort. Depending on uh, when this drops, um, April 6th and 7th at Mad Lab Theater, downtown Columbus, uh, I'm doing the album recording. Tickets are 10 bucks in advance, 12 bucks a day of show. Uh, if this drops after that, uh, go back in time and please come to my show. Uh, beyond that, you can check out what I got going on at any time at thedustinmeadows.com. Also check out Whiskey Bear stuff at whiskeybearcomedy.com. The Whiskey Bear Comedy Festival coming up May 9th through the 16th. Uh, eight days of comedy shows. Really excited for that. Uh, it's going to kick off with my album release show. And then we're rounding out with our headliner show with Sean Patton, who's a fucking phenomenal stand-up comedian. And then a bunch of regular shows, uh, Whiskey Bear stuff, stand-up showcases in between, as well as, I think, a special festival edition of Quiz Box. Oh, nice. So, yeah. The programming should be going up for that. Uh, I think when, before the end of April, we'll have the schedule live. For the festival? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. When is the festival? Did you say that? May 9th through the 16th, yeah. <laughs> Did God, I miss it? listen. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I, was, then, I zoned uh, out for Advanced a tickets will be on sale around the time the schedule goes live as well. Do you, are you doing... I know you had, like, weird... Not weird, but, like, sp- <laughs> ticket specials or something? Yeah, so, like, for so anyone like, that supported the Indiegogo, basically they got, like, discounted tickets... This year, the way we're doing it is we're not selling individual show passes outside of uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and uh, the two Shadowbox shows basically on Tuesday, Mm -hmm. Uh, and actually the Wednesday show, the rooftop show, is going to be a free show anyway. So Thursday through Sunday, uh, you can buy either a weekend pass, it'll be good for all the shows Thursday through Sunday, or you can buy a day pass, it'll get you into all the shows going on on a specific day. 
just because last year, like, with doing multiple shows in the same room and, like, having to clear the room and turn it over, it was just, like, a pain in the mm-hmm. ass, so we're just going to sell day passes as opposed to individual show tickets. Do you have prices cool. for that yet, or no? Not yet. I got to I gotta figure out the structuring, but I, I think last year, day passes ran, like, 10 or 12 bucks, and I think yeah. our weekend pass was, like, 40 or 50 or something like that. Uh, but it also included free admission to the free rooftop show as well as the hangover mixtape show we did on Monday. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's a uh, pretty, pretty solid value. Basically shakes out to like five to seven bucks per show, I think. Something like that. Which is what it was last year, right? Uh, all well, the shows last year were eight bucks a pop, actually. Oh, okay. So. You're saving money. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. I don't, I went to a bunch. I don't remember how many. <laughs> um. Just threw my money. <laughs> just threw your money. Just yeah. threw his we, we got a lot of traveling. Well, not a lot, but we got a couple of traveling shows this year. We got uh, the Underwear Comedy Party Show, which is a show yeah. we did last year, but the guy that hosted is Joe Pettis out of Atlanta. He'll actually be here this year to do it. And then we're bringing in Late Late Breakfast from Chicago oh, awesome. uh, to do a show Saturday during the day, which is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I was going to say, is there any repeating names? Uh, for those I don't, the <clears throat> three people that went last year that listened to there's, uh there's we definitely I think we've got like 11 or 12 people that were in the festival last year that are coming back um, I think we've got something like 68 or 69 performers oh wow uh, we yeah it's we, up from last year or, significantly or, yeah. we had 158 submissions this year last year was like Ooh. 95 that's and, awesome yeah it it was really fucking hard like it and that's part of the reason that we were late like, getting announcements out. Cause mm-hmm. We just had so many clips to go through, and it was just such a fucking slog. Like, it, I'm excited for the festival, but the the least fun part is over, which yeah. is which is going through and and having to make those calls because it sucks. Like, mm-hmm. cause especially like I apply to festivals all the time, and and it's never any fun being on the rejection letter end of it, which I have been a number of times. So, right. but co- half of comedy is rejection. <laughs> Yeah, very much so. Yeah, but uh, but I mean that's the thing. It's like I, like I, I, I wrote what I think is a, a the nicest rejection letter anyone ever will get. Um, but that's the thing too. It's like what I tell people is like it's a weekend. It's a festival. You know, yeah. like it's it's one string of shows, and there've been plenty of people that have found success that have done great things that haven't got into fucking festivals before. Right. So like it, it sucks, but like it's it's never the end of anyone's journey. By any stretch. Jackie, you have a plug? <laughs> Jackie, plug. Uh, I'll plug go to the festival, too, because last year when I went, I got to meet and connect with a lot of Facebook friends I have now who are comedians who don't oh, aren't in this see. city at all. Yeah, so you get to meet a lot of people, which is really nice for the people who are listening who are into comedy, which is probably all of you, because you're probably all the Sunday. Yeah, that would be weird if you're not. Yeah, you if you're very <laughs> anti-comedy listening to anti-comedy. this podcast. But you get a uh, you get to meet a lot of out of town comedians. I think the the next show I'm booked on right now is the next pop culture mixtape. Yeah, that's uh, right. I've already forgotten what date that is, but it's still later in April. Uh, what is it? Seventeenth. Yep. Seventeenth. I wanted to say the twentieth, but I, I can guarantee now. it will be out. Bef- this podcast will be out before the seventeenth. <laughs> but yeah. So well, <laughs> fingers crossed. Probably. If it's out before the 17th, you can come to Mikey's Late Night Slice at 8 p.m. on Monday the 17th to the Pop Culture Mixtape. It's a pizza attic. It's mm-hmm. a pizza attic. I've heard the pizza's good. Never actually eaten it there. Maybe really? I will next Monday. That's good pizza. Good za. Yeah. Good some, some, some good za. It's good. Uh, James, do you have a plug? Um, yeah. Uh, let's go. Actually, we do actually kind of have plugs. We do have an actual Uh, plug. So, on the 14th, uh, the Sundial and Backburner and every other comedy org at Ohio State is doing a variety show. We got Backburner. Oh. We got... I'll do it, I guess. Okay, go for it. We'll do Sundial. Uh. We got... Oh, no. (laughs) Eighth floor. Yeah, tell them. We got Fishbowl. Inform me. And then we got Brand New by the Slice. And also Buckeye (laughs) Stand-Up. You but no, we have. We already talked yeah. about. We have the great. They already, got, show. they already got their plug earlier. Yeah. I uh, um, whatever. But this is the second time we've done it. Last time was a fantastic it was, success. Yeah, it was. Uh, we filled an entire auditorium that we were not expecting to fill. It was Backburner's first real perform. Well, per- yeah. first giant performance. And so, uh, Sundown people will be performing. Backburner people will be performing. So if you're not performing in that, 
uh, go watch it. It's a great time. It's also free, which is nice because you it's get free. to see A4 perform for free, which, which you don't really rarely get to do. Everyone else is free. Yeah. But you also get, uh, it's a variety of comedy, so if you hate improv, you get to see sketch and stand-up, and if you hate stand-up, you get to see improv and sketch. And and nobody also, nobody, sketch. nobody no. hates sketch. No one nobody hates, hates sketch. sketch at all. Um, and if you only a little bit like sketch, you don't you don't hate it. Mm-hmm. There will also be monologues yes. and poem reading stuff. Because I'm reading a poem. Yeah. Um, there's also going to be a screening of the movie Tickling Giants um, that we are putting on with in collaboration with OUAB. Possibly April 10th. That's still in the works. So hopefully we'll get that out soon. Um, and. Yeah, I think that's... What about, what about, um, you're doing something tomorrow? Well, this will not be out tomorrow. Oh. Why did I even think of that? <laughs> <laughs> you need to know. No one's listening live. Um. Well, now we're curious. What are you doing tomorrow? Um, <laughs> tomorrow. Oh, thanks, Jackie. Um, tomorrow, Looks I, like it's uh, Dustin and Peter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The torpedo room at the gateway, we, it's a uh, fundraiser for the Sundown, and me and James are performing. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, nice. oh, wait, he is too. Our yes. audience member, Archie Barton. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time. I think, yeah. I'll, I think I'll actually be getting there at the very end of it to do a set. Nice. Hey. Oh, I'll be hosting, so I might introduce you. <laughs> yeah, because Kyle said no. Yeah. Cute. <laughs> Cute. Um, because I'm weirdly in that group chat, and I, just, no one knows that I'm in there. <laughs> um... <laughs> All right, but anyway, so as always, if you have a 10 out of 10 that you want us to do, if you have a topic you want to see discussed, if you have a favorite member of the Sundial you just really want on here, um, tweet at us at the Sundial OSU. You can go on Facebook at, um, I think it's just the Sundial. Um, you can just look up the Sundial Humor Magazine. We're also on Instagram. I guess you can personal message us on Instagram if you really felt inclined to. Um, the Sundial OSU. Um, and also our email is thesundownmagazine at gmail.com. Thank you all for listening to this, uh, five-person podcast, which is new. Um, any, thanks for listening. Classic. (laughs) I like how it ended the way it started. It ended the way it started. Nice and awkward. With a quiet boom. (laughs) Boom. 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 Boom.